All right, welcome back to another episode of Six Life Questions. I'm your boy, Corey G. Today, we got Brian Peters on the episode. What's up, Brian? Boom. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So this uh, first thing that comes to mind, I'll throw a question at you, banter back and forth. But we're trying to, you know, give some people some thought-provoking stuff out here. Thought-provoking stuff. Yeah. So, all right, six questions. Uh, Number one, what is one ritual that you are ultimately dedicated to? Breathing. Good. Talk yeah. to me. Yeah. I think breathing is something that it's, I, it became a ritual for a very long time. Like it was a routine where, okay, I had this morning ritual, I had this night ritual, I had the, all these things. And then now it's become just woven into my life where it's like, I know when I feel a certain way, I can breathe myself back to where I want to be. Love that. And so now like my, my ritual is just being connected and more, it's, I think it's more of like a presence and awareness and that's something that I think uh, part of the reason why I'm in that the breathing industry, but for sure, like breath now is like, I know when I'm reactive, I'm breathing, I'm, I'm slowing myself down. I know some mornings I need to amp myself up or I need to um, do these little breath holds at certain times where like, I know the whole tool belt where now it's just like, it's, it's part of my game and my ritual now is like, I'm a breather to control my state. And it's like getting more popular, right? But still it's an unconscious thing that people do wrong a lot yeah so when you're bringing more awareness to it and i think there's a lot of controllable things like anxiety and just like different type of uh anger for me which i've brought up a few times from things that you've taught me or just like uh we talked a long time ago about you know i passed out from the tattoo gun and then when i went to go get my teeth worked on it was the same sound yeah and so i almost like my body thought I was going to tattoo, but I didn't. And it, it almost reacted that way. And I did the box breathing and wor- and worked through it. So it's like understanding, like having your mouth closed, having your mouth open, like very basic. So give me two little quick points and we'll move on. Like breathing through your mouth, breathing through your nose. I think it's a really good. Yeah. Thing. It's just, re- it's, that's your remote. And yep. like, so, I mean, that's, we'll call it the filter to the remote, but okay. No, all you need to know, like, I don't even throw, like throwing the words like parasympathetic, sympathetic parasympathetic yeah. like, means down regulation like rest and digest is your nose. Okay. That's what rest, the, digest, nose. Yeah. Like down, down reg is nose. And that's what it's telling your brainstem breathing through your mouth is fight and flight, uh, sympathetic. So, okay. In that realm. Okay. If I want to, again, slow down, particularly in static states when I'm driving, like throughout the majority of your life where your heart rate's low. Okay. Breathing through my nose, reap these 28 benefits and I can go down Come. in that realm. And then now the inhale, exhale. So inhale diaphragm flattens, pulls the heart and the lungs open. It accelerates called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. You can feel it. Heart inhale. I'm, I'm a little stuffed up right now, but in that realm accelerates the heart rate. And like, that's all you need to know. And so now, okay, if I want to go down, okay, I'll breathe in through my nose. The exhale is not as important. It's how you inhale is important. Okay. Um, and then now I'll spend more time on the exhale because the exhale slows my heart rate. The inhale accelerates it. So, okay, let's just play with that ratio and find what works for me. And like, love it now. It just, I mean, there's a whole language there, but like your physiology is always speaking to you. You need to speak the same language back. But from a ritual standpoint, that's in the forefront of your mind immediately when you wake up now. Yeah. And it's, um, like sometimes I already, I, I just start doing it in general. And it's, so now it's like in my, in my coaching world and just cause not many people are, are hip to it. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, it's, and I don't know if we talked about this on the other pod, but it's like, like initially they're, unconsciously incompetent yeah and for sure and then now my goal educate you consciously incompetent and then we'll get reps and protocols and tools okay i'll become consciously competent and the goal is then to eventually become unconsciously competent again where i'm just walking around i have the tool belt to plug and play and i like i'm getting a little amped up maybe my physiology speaking to me my vision's getting narrow my palms sweaty whatever it ends up being your physiology speaking mm-hmm. now i just speak back but i speak its language through the breath through the breath. I love it. yeah i know all right number two and this could be multiple things but i i started with one it's like what's one thing that you are super proud of super proud of would probably be being named captain for the houston texans fuck yeah yeah that was probably my one of my most proud moments in uh professional sports in general like college as well like I who's think, the on the who, who is the captain's list brian our captains were studs we had it was me, i knew it was yeah, star studded yeah. then go ahead yeah so let yeah, them know brian yeah, uh jj watt deshaun watson <laughs> Dog, Ty- tyron <laughs> matthew yeah uh uh jonathan joseph and deandre hopkins just like dogs. and brian peters and brian peters just who yeah oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah pickerington yeah give me the juice yeah so um super proud 
um my parents like were super proud that whole reel and it's been like honestly it's like that just being named a leader from like peer voting from like at every level high school college and professional was really special to me but like that was one where like I wasn't expecting anything like that I was always just put my head down and do my job and help others and it just it materialized so and then it was um kind of like a special nuance in there um was that Bill O'Brien walked up and said I was the highest vote getter Damn. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, you could never not be proud of that. Bro. No. And that is so, so cool. That was that's the little nuance and I don't think I've ever shared that before besides maybe with my dad. Yeah. But like that was probably the one of my most proud moments. Whenever you're in a, a room full of killers like that and you know you're being voted the highest to be standing with all those names you just mentioned, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it, bro. Yeah, and it's like again, like you kind of like nod your head at it and go back to work. Yeah, and like of I, I think everybody approached it the same way, but it's cool in retrospect to go back and again, and a lot of these guys are still balling, you know, yeah. in that same capacity where it's uh, um, I don't know, yeah, it's just special. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, number three, what's uh one thing you wish you could change? Now, before you say anything, I'm going to tell you how this question's evolved. There's always, there was things in even myself, I wish I could change, but if I changed them, I wouldn't be me. Yeah. So, 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 so that's, so I need to, I need to yeah. add a t context to this well, so, question. So, I so I've been asking a similar question. Yeah. So like, uh, in that realm, what's one experience that you've had that you wish everybody else could experience? That's a cool question. And so like adopt that, but it's the same concept. Cause like, so I've been asked, asking this question and all I get is negative answers like what made me me was negative. Like yeah. it was the obstacle, it was the triumph, it was whatever, or like it was like overcoming some adversity. And like, like so uh, had Ebner on, he said his dad dying, me was me getting my jo like job broken and jumped. Like, I, yeah, I'd like to change that. But like, I also wouldn't have evolved and been wired shut in Dr. Serrano's basement for six weeks and learn how to train and supplement. There you go. And things like that, where it's like, what would I change? Like, I don't, I've changed my relationship with the past. Like I'd learned that like it's all that's out, out of my control. Like if I could just have the magical power to like not worry about the past and not worry about the future and be here with the skills that I have, I think that's like what so I would change. So your change would be understanding being present sooner. Yeah. And I like, like that. And, 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 and that capacity, I think it's a worthy endeavor. Yeah. And, the, and we talked about it on the pod last time too, just like where you can demystify that concept. Yeah. But like, like you can't change history and like and i when i run into athletes and high performers and any human that's still holding on to the 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 high school story and those kind of things where it's like holding them back as opposed to motivating them. yeah like you keep your relics around you here in the office and on the floor out there in the weight room and stuff like that's what history is me meant for it's meant to like guide you or remind you where you come from yeah and hopefully you're proud of your family and where you come from and, it, and if you're not like goldfish memory, that shit, like keep your scars on you and go. But in, in my world, like, yeah, like the, the past is only meant to be motivational. Yeah. yeah. And so like, that's the like, reminder is key. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think that's something you, you do really well. Yeah. I appreciate that, Brian. How did you initially build confidence, Brian? Initially? Yeah. Repetition and work. And like, that's all I knew. And when did that become like evident that that's what the sauce was? Um, my senior year in high school was the first time I saw that as like a separator and I, and it was being around the right person at the right time. And that was uh, Dr. Thoma who taught me how to train. And cause up to that point, like you kind of follow people around and like, Oh, you know, I like I'm athletic enough. I should be winning these. And like, I, I don't think it was DNA wired into me until like I understood that work capacity was a separator. Cause and like my football story or like my life story, um, it was pretty organic. My, like, it wasn't like, NFL or bust, NFL or bust. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like, uh, started playing football late in junior high, worked up through the freshman team. Then like, okay, sophomore year, they said I could play. So, okay, okay. Now they're against some attention. So now I'll go on to college and do it. And it was just like pretty organic in the realm where like, I didn't think I was going to play in the NFL till I was maybe like junior ish year in college. So it. just like, it wasn't that work 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 separate it was more like my competitive nature got triggered by this hard work capacity that i learned in dr thoma's basement and like just train into where i couldn't grab the steering wheel on the way yeah. home and stuff like that and i get to northwestern and they're like oh this safety he's gonna be a linebacker that guy's a beast and then like i'm hitting people and those kind of things where it's just like that was my confidence i had to earn it yeah and 
that well, was everyone does. Yeah. And like in that capacity, like I hadn't earned true confidence up to that point. Like everything else was pretty false. Yeah. yeah. Like it was pretty fake. And I was like, you, I mean, you know, high school, you're trying to find yourself in that capacity, but it wasn't till I put the work in and felt the separator and felt the eyes that come with confidence and high performance that, okay. With actual confidence. Yeah. So that's how I know I have to earn confidence. I can't, it's not bravado and peacocking, you know? And like those have their own place too, but like, that's where that was my first time. I, I think I developed true confidence. Um, cause there's nuances to it too. Like there's mental confidence and like the ability to call plays in high school. But sure. I'd, I'd say I spent a lot of time, um, fearing failure. And then once I learned that preparation and this work ethic mitigated that fear of failure, yep. okay. All the, now the work capacity and this understanding of mental confidence versus physical, it all kind of just blossomed. But your senior year, that's when it all started to kind of line up. Where yeah. You're like, wait a second. All right, here's my output for my input, and I just need to continue this. Yeah, and it was just like kind of multifaceted, but it, it came on pretty heavy in a wave. Like, picked up my scholarship offer, like my Northwestern one late my senior season. And then at the same time, I was training really hard and seeing the changes and got introduced to supplements and did all this stuff that kind of peaked. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, number five, what's success mean to you? Hmm. That's a, an evolving concept these days. Sure is. Mm. I'd say success to me is freedom. Yeah. And so it's freedom of time. And I mean, that means obviously like in essence, like, it, cause I always think success and like, I always thought it was an accomplishment and a destination in this concept where freedom to make your choice and pursue and be curious and those kind of things and hopefully it's in something you love in that capacity so like i think it's um what's a good way to say it i wish i would have thought this question out a little bit because i knew you guys were going to ask it too (laughs) (laughs) that's all right Uh, yeah uh in that capacity i think it's um it's a yeah it's a it's a peaceful freedom to attack what you want yeah. And if I had to like summarize it on your terms, yeah, on your terms and like your terms is like now it's like you get to determine what's enough. You get to determine what to let go and that kind of concept where it's like I, st- I still think success is a version of this peaceful freedom. I don't know. I don't know a better way to say yeah. it because like I would agree you get to pick up your stress accordingly. And then now understanding that that success and any stress you pick up in your life is because you chose to it. It gets a little yeah. easier to go ahead and keep striving to be successful because they're all my choices and really everything is your choice. And I just think probably not the best answer, but I do think it's that weird balance. No, Um, I think, I think it's accurate because I think it bounces back and forth. If I think of myself, it's like certain points in my life have been very stressful all by choice to try to strive for another, you know, whatever. And it like didn't become like a dollar figure like a long time ago. So it's like, then it became more about all the choice of freedom especially once, you know, I kind of got to this situation here. So it's evolved. But I, the, I always say this though, Brian, I felt successful in my first gym mm. because it was so at, it, I always, I think that this is why my perspective is a little different is like everything after the first studio was successful to me because I didn't even know if it would work. Yeah. House so, money. Yeah. Yeah. House money. Dudes, I've been playing with house money since 99. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. Yeah. So if you would have asked me the rest of my life, I would have said I felt successful. Because it was an idea that I didn't know anybody had done and I went and did it. And so all of these things that happened past that com- you know, complete icing on the top. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, that's a cool way to do it where it's like, again, like you've created and refined and found that this, For sure. this whole process is like, that's the magic in general is like, but the magic is the freedom and, and there are stresses that come with it. But I think the, I think the way you answer is really good. The other thing that I haven't asked people, but I think, I'm going to piggyback off. Is that enough answer? Mm, yeah. What question that that's, I think a really tricky one that I battle with probably every day. And, but I think it is a constant battle and it's like, because it's almost like, cause we, I had, I talked to one of my buddies about this not too long ago. It's like, what's enough. And like now how much are you balancing? How much is on your plate? And this like gets into goal setting of like, really you should start with an empty plate and then pick up priorities accordingly. And then, but me and my buddy Scarlett got into this conversation, how he treats, like his life and enough mm-hmm. and like where he's putting his energy into projects is like those horses at the, at the fair where you spray the water into the okay. hole and they yeah. go, he goes, well, okay, this one's falling back. I need to get more, get more of that. I need to spend more time on football or I want more fashion. He's a diva. Mm-hmm. But in that capacity, um, now it's like, okay, like 
in essence, like I need to manage my energy and make sure that my priorities, cause like enough, isn't like a things thing is basically mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get at. It's not like, it's not the car. It's not the bank account. It's not all these things like enough is like, okay, I need to make sure like my relationships are good. Is my relationship with my wife or my girlfriend deep enough? Yep. Do I understand my kid? Do like all these other things where I think enough is just like this. I, I don't know. Like, I think it's kind of like the finite and infinite games in that capacity. You need to understand when you won the game and get the fuck out. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, facts. Yeah. But it's just like, okay. Like, like you, I, I got, I got the wife. I can stop playing the fucking girl game, you know, yeah. like I get whatever. Like it's that whole thing. It's like, Oh, I have enough money. Like I know my plan for my financial future. Like I don't need to chase money. And like now I can, maybe I can chase leverage. And then yeah. now if I want to change the world in some other capacity or, like revolutionize X, Y, and Z. I don't know in that capacity, but I think it, I think enough is just, um, that that's where, you, again, if you're picking up things and you're picking up mortgages and you're picking up car payments, you're picking up stress. Yes. And so the things enough is needs to be looked at very intelligently. But like when you start talking about enough time with my people, yeah, uh, yeah, that's where, and now it's like enough time for myself and like that's, and that's where like it, it spreads into your whole life. No, I like it. All right. Last question. Six life questions. We kind of fit in seven, well, but yeah, team game. What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No team. what is one piece of advice at this point of Brian's life that you would leave basically everybody? So like, you know, this could evolve over time, but as all the travels and playing all the people you've been around and learn from, and it's like. If you only got one chance to leave one kind of thing, what would it be? These are deep questions out here, Brian. Yeah, and I and I love it <laughs> because like I mean, so many things come to like because I've gotten so much good advice and I like and my advice changes person to person so much too in that capacity because you start feeling and vibing around different people mm -hmm. and if I had to like summarize, like if anything, it's just like get fucking going and like create do the things you want to do, like love the people you want to love. And like that special stuff in life is like, get fucking going. Yeah. Cause like, that's like my biggest frustration with myself is when I'm not, um, cause this is like more my advice to myself, but I think it applies to everybody because we, like I, I dealt with all these like imposter issues and then like, and that's like, even just like the, the confidence in different times of my life where it's just like, if I would have just gone and yeah. I would have, committed all in and all these things where now it's like now i'm reaping some of that reward where like, I'm, I'm just going just like, go i'll hop in the car for six thousand miles like you need somebody to coach you i'm there like yeah. let's fucking go i think that uh what i learned a long time ago was just getting it in motion it's v1's never going to be v10 anyway like it's yeah. impossible to start with a truly finished product and i'm not a perfectionist because i know it's impossible to do so it's like you want to make it better and just like, even when we switched to the bags, version ones was blown up in the mail. Version two is amazing. And Cole made these art, the pieces of art with yeah. every one. So it's like, but I know that that's the natural evolution of everything. The podcast that we start on that wall, isn't going to be the, it's going to be different three weeks from now than it is now. Just even if it's a little bit right, but the reps is what led to that. If we weren't doing the yoke boys, we're not doing the Ohio state, the boom yeah. cast. Now you, you have to get going people over analyze and, then they what over analyzation yeah. paralyzation yeah. right analysis by paralysis yeah. or analysis paralysis but yeah like like momentum is one of the strong like compound interests and momentum are the yeah. strongest things in sport and money everything and everything and like yeah like and once you learn and like okay like i'm starting at the bottom of the mountain or like i'm starting something new it's gonna suck the goal tomorrow hey suck less yeah you know Got okay. action yeah and then just go and that's like again that again that's something i i love about the boys all out here like everybody's about that action yeah for sure yeah i think it's dope. brian great 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 job answering questions where can everybody find you at uh brian underscore peters 10 and at chasing edges yeah man boom. appreciate you brother Easy. appreciate, appreciate you. your friendship boom all right we're out of here uh six life questions with brian peters i'm your boy Corey g we out